Not quite sure why this one isn't working as I expected, but I'm gonna try and get this other one going. And we're getting somewhere, but it's really not there yet. Here we go. So this is the controller assembly for the C as I received it, which has a number of components inside it. We've got three stepper drives. The largest one I'm assuming will be for the Z, next one down for the Y, next one down for the X. In terms of power supply, it looks like we've got fused power supplies to each of the drivers. We've got a, a breakout down there. Some capacitors to smooth. We've got some bridge rectum fryers down there. Nice big toroidal transformer. AC input. Big fuse. E stop. Now that's on the transformer. So once that stops, I wonder how quickly the steppers will actually stop. Perhaps it would be better to have a secondary e-stop on the enable of the stepper drives. All right, so I believe I'm gonna reconfigure this somewhat to fit our NBCM 2.1 USB controller in. Um, you can see elements of some legacy components. That's a probably a four port. Okay, so that's a stepper out. And a TLR mic plug. So the stepper out is similar in configuration to these guys. One, two, three. That's our power feed. Interesting the um, resistor in line. Wonder if that's to do with our voltage drop. Okay. So we have a control feed off this board here. Uh, control feed off that board there. Control feed off that board there. Looks like maybe the enable was wired up at some point for that as well. Same issue as I was investigating. Uh, looks like we've got power coming from the transformer. One stepper driver out completely. DM556. Another stepper driver out completely. 9 to 42 volts. Strips. Um, as we free up the power supply, so that's still joined, that's still joined. That's a stepper up there. Another lead here, looks like another output. Maybe for an external stepper drive. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably to be an input, there was a Z up and down switch wired up, so I'd say that's what that one there was for. Um, two more wires there. I wonder if that was the use as a speed control. 
because I know that there was a speed control hooked up at one stage on the VFD so you could have a computer controlled speed. Alright, we've got the board still wired in there. Okay, certainly got some deconstruction to do. Now we'll see how we can lay it out to fit our new components. Alright, so now we're set up on the test bench and we're just going to do a bit of a look-see to see what voltage we've actually got on those two taps. So there's the red coil, that one and this one which is broken out to those two there. We'll start there. Uh, I've only got two hands, so I'm going to have to come back. So, maybe that's the spot for it all. The USB port can punch through the side here. There's enough access for wiring there. These extra output ports are pretty constrained, but I don't think I'm actually going to be needing those. There's plenty of I.O. here. Maybe some output would be handy. They're all inputs. Spindle and steppers. Okay. There's plenty of room to reach that one. If I have that that way up, then can sort of reach it but it means wiring is a bit tight so there's the pin outs that's that end so if I ever need to change the micro stepping that's a bit tight and horrible um, but it is accessible um, So yeah, outputs then, that's the issue there. If I keep this here, it means I can't put this here. Or if I do, it's pretty tight for space. I suppose I could do that. It's not too bad. Does it give me enough room for this? If I move these, it might. If I move these to here, Is there a problem with them being that close? There's little jiggers on the house, so I can't go right to the edge. And airflow is another consideration. Another option I was considering around this way which gives me a little bit of room here to access those connectors they would fit to these ports but then got this little bugger down here to do or if I don't have that one there I can move that that way I can potentially do something like Work. All right, so we can 
consider that's what I'm going to do. Now, it could just go up without too much drama. It doesn't have to be bang on the ground. So if we consider that spot, one, two. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Get around that way. And then just have that up a bit. I'm sure it might be the go. That can still go that way. We want to keep a bit of clearance from those. That then gives us full access to these guys, which I think is useful. Probably if that was around that way, it would make more sense, wouldn't it? Full access to those guys. So now I've isolated what's in the control box down to 240 volts in the coil. There's two rectifiers, which means I've got one tapped pair going between red and black and red. On this rectifier and then the other rectifier I've got black and white 
So, my thoughts is that that's tapping two different voltages off the reg. Now, we've got a common, this black tap, which is taken off the red here, and the red, and the, this one here. So they're both wired up together. And then off the other foot of the reg, we've got a power rail here and here. So this rail, Let's jump it across here and here to one of the caps back to earth from here to the other cap and back to the same earth so this looks to be either end of that power rail between here those three points has got some ripple and, and smoothing applied then to the other one there's a single pair of caps which is just bridged across the the other tap. So this will be one voltage pair and this will be another voltage pair. And depending on what the voltage capability of the drivers is, um, I know one's got a 42 volt value. There's no obvious info on this one as far as the voltage, but I can try and find the data sheet. And it appeared that X and Y were split across the two set of caps, so that if X and Y are both moving at the same time, that the smoothing caps would have an ability to keep the noise down in the power rail, I suppose. Um, As fitment goes, this is our board. Our output ports are currently not wired up to anything, neither are those input ports. We've got a USB which we might run out through here. We've got to sit that somewhere. We've then still got to fit two more drivers in here. One, two. This can rotate 180 or something to allow this driver to sit there, perhaps. So it's worth shuffling around to find a spot where they will fit happily inside the box. There are some screw holes for the bottom of that, so I'm sure I can mount it once I've got a spot in the, in the location, one or the other might even mount it so that the USB port is actually pushed through the side of the cab. That might be the go. Might sit there. Hmm. If I can rotate this around, that might be the go. Just punch a hole through here for the, for the USB. Alright, All right. so on this tap, which you can just sort of see down there, We've got 64.8 volts and the one alongside we've got 23.4 volts which is that next set. So we've got 24 volts and 65 volts. It's quite a big chunky power. Alrighty. And once the power comes off we've got these little power drain resistors that just slowly discharge the caps. So there's still 17 volts in the caps at the minute. And 43 in the other caps. Yeah, so we don't want those uh, to be touched until they're drained. But that's a nice little safety feature that Paul's put in this. It's just that the uh, caps will drain themselves, which is great. All right, so just been doing a little bit of research into what the existing settings for all of these parts of the drivers were. Opened up the hole for the USB port, poked through, 
And right now, setting up hole centers and offset heights so that I can position four bolts to hold that all together. Alright, so that's the next bit. And while that's all going on, we're still trying to get a little computer up and running to run as the brain. Um, as I say, this is the old computer, seen it better days, hard drive off it, and uh, just plain jiggery pokery with Windows 7 doesn't want to play at the moment. But we'll get there, we'll have it all brainy soon. Thanks for watching.